You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, I'd like to call to order the uh, Board of Police Commissioners meeting at, uh, on February 13th at 5.45 um, on Monday, February 13th. Okay, uh, approval of the minutes from January 9th. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, traffic. Mm. Which start with traffic? Of the chief. No, he comes after traffic, doesn't he? What? No. Traffic is always the end. Yeah, I'm always the oh, okay. end. All right, report of the chief. And did you make note of who was here and who wasn't? Who was not here? Sisulis and Valerie. Well, we don't mention who was not here. We don't usually do that. And I call. I call. All right. Go ahead. Let's, let's so, I don't have a, a whole lot to report to the commission this month. You have your statistical report in there. Um, some of the trends we've been seeing are continuing, but all in all, kind of status quo. You can go through that at your leisure. Um, tonight, there's a, a couple things. Um, one is. Obviously, under the agenda, we have the building project report that the deputy will bring up some new information uh, regarding that. Also, tonight, I've uh, invited Lieutenant uh, Corey Ann Carangelo here, um, and the reason for that is, is I think it's appropriate, number one, to recognize her um, for her efforts with Kalia, but also have her give us a brief update of uh, where we are with that process. We just went through our uh, site visit and she can also answer some questions um, to you. So for under the, the, the Chief's report, I'll turn it over to her just to address the CLIA stuff a little bit, and then if the Commission has any questions, she's she's ready to answer those for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in February of 2020, we started this process of um, self-assessment uh, in for CLIA. There's 186 standards that we have to meet. Each of those standards has um, bullets of compliance that we have to show proofs of. So we have to have a policy in place, but then we also have to show proofs of that compliance for three years. So 2020, 2021, and 2022. Now we're in 2023. Um, so after that three year self-assessment of looking at our policies, updating them, updating training, uh, myself and Dominique Bergolto, the crime analyst um, who's not here, done, did a ton of work with this process. Um, we finished that self-assessment phase and then we did a web-based assessment. That web-based assessment had two CLIA assessors go online to our database um, and they did a very, very in-depth assessment. We have over 1,200 proofs in there from reports, videos, photos, um, showing everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We've had uh, lengthy analysis that we've done, um, reviews, improvements. Um, so after that web-based, like the chief said, we just had our site-based visit. It was three days. Uh, chief Lees from Indiana came out. She's I was been with, there, yeah. Yep, Chief Lees has been with Clea for about 10 Four, years, 12 years. Four years she's been in charge. Yeah, so um, she came out. She, uh, as far as I know, she enjoyed what she saw. We showed four areas of interest that we do well. Um, we chose to show off our community engagement, uh, our involvement in the social with the police social worker, as well as our pursuits in our use of force uh, policy and procedures. So I believe we did an excellent job. We put a lot of effort in. Um, now that that site base is complete, she has 10 days to do a report. When she's done with her report, she can recommend um, anything that we need to do better. Hopefully that will be minimal. Um, she was very impressed. Yeah, and then in July, we will go in front of the board of CLIA and in Oklahoma City and hopefully become accredited. Once that happens, um, it is an every day, every week, every month uh, process that we will continue to have high standards and we will maintain that uh, accreditation. Now, how much does this cost us? I'd have to pull those numbers. There's an mm -hmm. initial fee, and then there's yearly fees 12, associated. I think that was the initial fee, twelve or thirteen. 12, 12, and it was and there's really assessment twenty fee. something, twenty thousand something. And then there's an ongoing um, their site cost, but the initial fee we paid um, a while back. So 
that's not in our operating budget. I'd cover that with the asset forfeiture. Um, but as we move forward, we're in it for good. So something we can look at. Now, didn't we drop out of Kalia? Didn't we stop Kalia at a certain yes. point? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yes, we were we were Kalia uh, approved. approved when I joined the police commission. That had to be prior that to was me. Eight, also, I think eight years two thousand eight, right? maybe ten. Ten. Ten yeah. years ago, we made a decision to to, to not do that because of cost and and because of the ongoing work required to keep that up because it's not you know it's one thing is getting it and then as you have said you have to keep that up right but it's not a bad thing it it it, it looks at, at what we're doing and how we're doing it and makes us stay on the ball so mm -hmm. that's and we were already doing it anyway yes but but the fact is 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 we were one of the first people police departments in Connecticut to be approved mm -hmm. by Kalia and then we stopped and now we're doing it again and yeah, good for us. We're prepared to keep yeah. it this time. Right. We'll keep it going. We have a great team here. We have good leadership here. We have great policies in place, good training, and we're going to keep it up. That's great. But, good. But if I could just ask a question being a new board commissioner mm -hmm. member, what is the advantage to Brantford, the town of Brantford, to have this accreditation? So Kalia is essentially the gold standard. They consider it, it's almost like varsity of policies and procedures. It, it's better for accountability for the police department, um, transparency, it's better for community engagement. Um, it's better to you know make sure we have things in place and have officers follow it. We have, it's not that we just issue something, it's constant follow up. Um, if we fall short in some areas, which hopefully we won't, but we all know that mistakes can happen, we'll, we'll meet those before they become bigger issues. So the other thing is with the police accountability bill, every agency has to have some sort of accreditation, whether it's state accreditation or this national accreditation before 2026. This is a better choice. Um, there's, there's certainly a lot more work involved, but being on this team and leading this team, especially in the training division, um, I don't see why we wouldn't go for go for that gold right there. So now, it's been does anyone know what Kalia stands for? The the letters mean something, don't they? Yeah, com commission accreditation of law enforcement agencies. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else? I want to thank you for your efforts in that. Mm. Great. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, like she said, Dominique was a, a, another major player in this, and this, again, was extra work on top of their already assigned tasks and, you know, a lot of the policy creation and updating. So, um, you know, great job. You know, myself and the deputy would, you know, contribute where we could, um, but definitely with with the lieutenant and Dominique, we were in good hands. So it's gonna be a big feather in the agency's cap and a lot of it has to do but um, with their efforts. So I wanted her to come here tonight to address you with that and also uh, to recognize her and uh, also Dominique for their, their hard work in this. It was not an easy task, um, but I'm very confident we're at the finish line and I'm very confident that she'll be standing there with the plaque, getting a picture taken, um, bringing it Next back, year. bringing it yeah. back home. Good. So uh, again, good work. You know, we, kudos, <laughs> job well done. Um, if a couple officers uh, were recognized via um, some letters, one we had someone that brought in um, some cookies uh, from the Blue Star Moms to to recognize law enforcement. Lieutenant Ramey met with them and. Um, you see that in your packet. Nice, uh, nice thought on their part. Now, these two letters mean mean a lot because you know we can look at statistical measurements of officer activity. We can look at crime stats. We can look at um, you know all these different matrix to see how a police department is doing. But you know when we talked about Kalia about our community engagement, I think these two letters really highlight. Um, what makes our, our agency run, and that's you know just good people trying to mm -hmm. do the right thing. So we have a letter from uh, a resident that was in the Coles parking lot and um, had their two-year-old grandson spotted the police car. Officer Clyburn got out, spoke with them, 
gave him a tour of the car, turned the lights on, um, and presented a little uh, Brantford police car uh, oh. trinket, which now becomes part of their uh, bath time every night. And um, <laughs> I guess, yeah, but you know, that's huge. That, that's a boy. He's just going to yeah. be passing it on. It's great. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess he, he won't let it go. So, you know, what they say is it only took Officer Clyburn a few minutes, turned into something memorable yeah. for a little boy and his grandparents. I want to thank her for being so kind, but also for the job she does with, along with so many police officers to help protect us. Um, so, so if that wasn't um, a good representation, now we have another uh, resident from uh, South Monoe Street that on the Thanksgiving weekend, um, Officer Stephen Crowley was working an extra duty traffic job there. And this resident and his 10 year old son felt, you know, it was a Thanksgiving weekend and they were like, wow, he's not with his family, he's out there working. So they decided to go out there and bring him a little care package um, with, with some cookies and stuff. And they went out there. Officer uh, Crowley engaged in a, a really big game of rock, paper, scissors with, with the uh, 10 year old boy. So the, the resident says that the impact that he made on his 10 year old son, he, he, he couldn't measure it and it meant so, mu so much to him. He termed it a Norman Rockwell moment. Um, Thank you. Well, so that was really nice. Well, what they didn't know was on Christmas Eve, Officer Crowley was once again working a holiday. But this time he, he brought a letter of appreciation and a gift card to the 10 year old and to the house um, which really set him, you know, to the moon. He said, "This, he said, this had an impact on my son that I cannot easily explain." Uh, he wants to uh, applaud Officer Crowley not only for his selflessness and his sacrifice, but paying attention to the community relations, um, understanding it could be troubling for us at times to carry out our duty. This is the impact we need to make, and he wanted it to uh, show his appreciation. So that was a letter we received um, last nice. month. So. That again, kid is going to want to be a I was going to say maybe both. Boys. Exactly. So, again, uh, Officer Crowley, a very tenured officer, uh, over 30 years' experience, still at it. Officer Clyburn, a newer officer, embracing the same tenets of policing, help us build that support. So, I'm just as proud as I always say to, with these these letters. Um, so, these two I think highlight and, and mean a lot. Um, the only other thing I have is uh, forfeiture report. There was a, a, I believe a $1,500 deposit, but really nothing <clears throat> status quo there, no expenditures. And as you know, uh, we've met uh, at different points in time about the budget. Uh, essentially the budget in a nutshell this year, we have some capital improvements. I mean, uh, excuse me, some increases on our capital lines that are driven by the manufacturing of the vehicle. Ford has hit us with about a four or five thousand dollar increase. There's nothing we can do with that. There's also some increases on the equipment side, so we're going to see an increase on the, the vehicle costs uh, on the capital side. The remaining capital items are all fairly steady. There's no significant increases, as you know. Those fund our uh, radio replacements. Uh, we trickle in new radios every year to avoid a big capital expenditure at year ten and also our vest replacement. The vest will be coming up, uh, I believe in 2024. So we put in, uh, I believe 90, 100 every year to help offset that. So you'll see on the capital side, on the operational side of the budget, the vast majority of the budget is composed, comprised of the um, personnel costs. We are without a contract, the police are still in negotiations. So that will reflect a zero on any wage increases until that contract is settled. All the lines that are associated or impacted by that will be readjusted by finance at that time. So once we have a contract, the wage increases go in, those will be all readjusted. That leaves us with very few operating lines, um, no really significant uh, increases, the little ones I pointed out to you. So that's the budget. Um, if it's a, you know, a motion by the uh, commission to accept that, I will present that uh, through the Board of Finance and ultimately the RTM. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Other than that, uh, report item subsection D, police building project. I'll turn it over to the deputy for his uh, update on that. So since we um, last met, we requested uh, an appropriation of $325,000. Um, 
that money is to contract both Chaplinsky Humes, <clears throat> our architect Brian Humes, um, and Downs Construction for design development and pre-construction services. Um, so since last month, we had met and went in front of the Board of Finance and the RTM Public Services Committee. Uh, we presented our presentation to them um, in regards to the building and, and everything we planned on correcting um, here. Uh, we also offered tours to RTM members to visit the building and to view the issues we're proposing to correct. Um, the tours were well, well received. Most RTM members met with us and had visited the building. Um, so the resolution for that appropriation of the 325000 that went in front of the full RTM on February 8th, and that was passed. So that money may take a couple weeks to become available, but in that time, then we hope to sign after that, sign the contracts with both Brian Humes, uh, Jakunski Humes, and Downs Construction. And um, that will allow us to move into the next phases of the project. That doesn't come out of our budget, correct? No, it, it doesn't. Right. It's uh, under a general yes. obligation bond. Right, 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 right. And no, but I, I want to just state that for the record is, that it's it's actually not part of what what we're mm -hmm. just talking about now. Correct. So that's that's where we're at right now. The project's moving along. Um, that will allow us to enter the next phases and. Um, we'll go from there. We'll have a better idea of exactly what the project will cost as a whole. Um, and, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. We approve the report of the chief. Now, now we do traffic. Oh, I know. We the report of the chief. We finished with him now. Oh, so. Yep. You're yeah. set. Okay. Traffic. Okay. <clears throat> for the uh, first request was for no parking signs in the underpass on Thimble Island Road. Um, I had put in Leeds Island Road, so I was wrong. It's Thimble Island Road. But the committee is uh, recommending that we move forward with that. Okay. Um, the second one is a request for no parking signs on the land trust. Should, should we vote on that? Well, we'll we just can do, do the whole. Well, we actually, we, we can't because do there's some, one, yeah, we got there's some that aren't. Okay, so, I, so I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to approve that. Okay, second. Pardon. Go ahead, Janice. Aye. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? All in favor. Okay. Second is a request for no parking signs on the land trust property on Pawson Road. Again, I apologize. I thought it was Fenway, but it's Pawson. Um, and there are already uh, installed mile per hour signs on each end of the land trust area. So it's a, a simple matter of just putting a sign below the mile per hour sign saying no parking. The committee recommends approving this request. Okay. Is there a motion? I'd like to make may a motion. I, well, may I ask a question yeah. first yeah. before you vote? I do have a concern. Um, the answer that was given to the woman who was there about when the possibility of having a sign put up, help me to understand how that works because I don't feel like she got a good answer. I'm not so sure there is a definite answer we can give her. Once we approve it, then we turn it over to Public Works. Uh -huh. And they have to use their resources and triage the best that they can. So that's not our responsibility to no. tell people that no. No. the time period. Okay. So we, we've made uh, tremendous strides over the past couple of years. So uh, we've had LTA and, and commission action that sat for years. So. If, if you look at the cost to do these projects, so in this case, it's a couple signs. Um, Public Works has been very good and, and working with Lieutenant Ramey and getting things done very quickly. Uh, if we talk intersections, crosswalks, we have projects right, okay. dating back in 2016. I, I remember that. Or the state, yeah. or, and if the state's involved. Yeah. So you know. when we talk to signs, depending on, obviously we have had a, a, a big snow season, so. Um, it really, they've been very responsive. Public Works has been responsive. When it gets to the, the striping and the lining, that is seasonal and that's contractually based. So they have X amount of money allocated to that. And once that money's out, you can make motions here for striping, but it's gonna get pushed into another oh, fiscal yeah. year or another season um, when they're gonna do the striping. So sometimes we see delays with striping, but all in all, with your request of signage, as long as it's not a, a high ticket item, expensive, and something we don't have, 
they're pretty good and okay. she should see that within a reasonable amount of time okay. especially Thanks. since they're just putting a sign underneath the sign yeah the yeah pools aren't involved there's no call before you dig and other other things that they and, have to and do. from purpose uh, just because, again because you're new peter ugrit actually had a list for us that he did that showed everything that we had sent and and where it was and yes some of it was three years I saw, old I saw but it, yeah. but that's something else we might do we might continue to do if if Patty wants to. Continue it is. List. Um, we, yeah. we send it over to. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. So, it's, so it's, it's, we're aware of the issues. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. I, I'm not saying we aren't. I d it just seems to me that if the public comes before us, they have a, a right to know an answer. I would mm -hmm. want to know the answer, and I didn't feel that. I think they do get the answer because the, we say we're going to look into it or turn it over to. Yeah. Public okay. works or. I, I think. think it, well, go ahead. Patty. No, I was just going to say, I think you're going to be surprised because we've done a few of these where it's just a matter of putting a sign underneath the sign. And as the chief was saying, Public Works has been very cooperative working with us and getting it done pretty yeah. timely. But I, you have a good point, but it's also very important for the public to understand that um, when we discuss intersections, crosswalks, there was someone right. who was looking for a crosswalk. Those take engineering traffic engineering studies, the cost, they have to bring them up to ADA compliance. So we talk a control signal. There's only, that's not in our budget, by the way, we have no line for any of these improvements. It's on public work side. Um, so they have projects that engineering is bringing forth, updating existing uh, streets and roads, and it's all fighting for that same pot of money. So sometimes we have projects that we approve that they, just cannot fulfill based upon the budget. So, you know, the, the little ones like this, um, yeah. they, they have been great. Okay, so is there a motion? Yes. I'll make a motion. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? A uh, second. All in All favor? favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Uh, then the third one is a request for a left turn blinker and arrow on Route 1 turning onto Cherry Hill Road. It was the um, traffic committee's recommendation that we do um, go to uh, the DOT because it, it is a state road. And that's about the only action we can take right now. Right, so like no, to make, so right, I make to make a motion that we ask. Uh, the DOT? The, well, that we ask you guys to contact the DOT and uh, move on from there on that. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Third one is a request for no parking signs on the cul-de-sac on Crescent Bluff Avenue. You skip Buena Vista. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, request for no parking signs on the right side of Buena Vista Road. It was the traffic committee's uh, recommendation, no action at this time. Yeah. Then request for no parking sign in the cul-de-sac on Crescent, Crescent Bluff Avenue. Uh, it's the committee's recommendation that we um, do the striping for the no parking on the asphalt in the cul-de-sac and place a sign on the end of the existing fence that's there that will meet our requirements of, what, five to six feet, something like that. I'd like to make a motion to do that. Second. All, All in favor? favor. Aye. Okay. And then um, request for striping at stop signs and speed enforcement on Swift and Breezy Lane. It was the committee's recommendation to um, increase the traffic enforcement on a more routine and consistent basis down there and to go ahead and do the striping at the stop signs. I'd like to make a motion that we do that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that is the end of the traffic report. Okay, do we approve the traffic report? <laughs> no. Um, report of the chair, I don't have anything. We had we heard our citizens' comments in the other room, so oh, I we think. have public comments still for this meeting. Right. right. Public citizens' oh. comments. Is that first or? No, okay, yeah. go ahead. Hi, happy new year. I wasn't here last, last yeah. month because I, I had the truck throw and I didn't want to get the whole police commission sick. Thanks. So. <laughs> we appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> so you're definitely not going to get struck throw tonight. Don't worry. Um, I have a question for, uh, is it Lieutenant Conjo? 
Yes. Yes. So the uh, Kalia is Kalia program. Yes. Um. So just so I'm understanding this correctly, do they come in and evaluate the information and then help you um, reorganize policy so that the barriers or whatever things that needed to be improved are improved before the end of the three years? That kind of so they provide you, um, there's 186 standards, so they provide you with a standard. Um, that standard may have, of those 186, one might have one bullet point, one might have five bullet points, one might have ten. So once, the, once you actually look at those standards, they're um, national-based standards. So what we do in Connecticut may not be the same as, as what they do out in California. Mm -hmm but they standardize them so that you can meet them, you may exceed them. Like for instance, if you have to do um, an annual report on something, we can choose as an agency to do it every six months. We're meeting the standard and then we're exceeding it. So what we would do is we would take what's required, we have to document what we're doing through policy and then through proofs. So we have uh, Power DMS, which is a um, electronic filing system, we keep all of our policies in there. The officers have to sign off on the policies once they're issued. Um, they have access to them all the time. If we have training, we push it out through there, documents, signatures, things like that. So our assessment um, through CALEA is in Power DMS. So Power DMS has, um, we can share it with those um, compliance members to check for our compliance. So what they first do is once we um, reviewed our policies, made sure that they were CALEA compliant, which they of course have to be State of Connecticut compliant. Um, we make sure they meet the standard, they do a web-based assessment, they check everything electronically. Now obviously um, it's hard to view someone's agency from a computer, so then they come in in person after that web-based is complete. They may make su suggestions, so when they did our web-based back, um, it was about 40 days prior to their site base. so when they did that, um, they recommended some things for us to do, um, uh, like an example of that would be, um, you know, we have like certain standards that we may have met, but we have to have additional support for those standards. It's kind of hard to explain without right. you actually looking yeah. at it. But they do come in person and they view everything. Um, they'll continue to assess us each year through our web-based. So what we do is we upload um, those proofs, so reports and, and things like that. Um, when you say proofs, story. what about body cam footage? Do you yep, we can upload that too. Uh, there's no requirement for a proof. It can be a video, it can be a photo, it can be a report, it can be a citizen statement. Um, so do they take the, like, uh, the qualitative data of, of videos and quantify it in a way to examine it? Or is that, is that a little... Um, too technical? It's a lot of work. We wouldn't upload like numerous uh, extensive number of videos unless it was required to do that but okay. we, we, we do maintain our videos on the state retention schedule okay. so they are available so for instance if there wasn't something uploaded but they wanted to see it we can give them access to it I see yeah and then my other question is um, that report after say you get this uh, accreditation um, do you, is it public record or will it be available for the public to read and view I believe so. So that's a, a report that Kalia will create. Okay. Um, so we have our own standards on public record when we create it, and we're the keeper of that record. Um, Kalia records, I'm sure, have their own standards as well. I would hope that they would provide it to us, and I'm reasonably certain they will. I don't want to say for sure because I've never been through this process, but once they provide us with that report, we can certainly um, publish it or we can send it out if you want to um, request it we can definitely share it with you you don't look tired because that which is a compliment because it sounds like a ton of, of work what mm -hmm. you just described it's and a lot of work a lot of work and you only paid that like I think twelve thousand dollars is kind of cheap for that so you probably did a lot of the the legwork of um I honestly myself and Dominique um and then we we have a pretty good uh team here with with uh, officers and supervisors. I mean, I, I reached out to certain people if their expertise is in that area and they, that we all kind of pitched in and helped out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a significant like a amount of work. work. Yes. So, thank you. Yep. Okay. Yes, thank you. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BranfordTV.org.